Welcome to the Network Engineering Video Blog. I am your host, Michael Crane. So in today's video, we are going to move our SIP test bed. Well, actually, we're going to move it to the Los Angeles test bed. Our test bed. So we're basically just testing SIP phone to SIP phone, right? And so we need to connect these guys to a real router. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a router, but for us, it's going to be a router because we're going to be using uh, Cisco Call Manager Express, right? Cisco has a couple products. One is the Call Manager Express, which runs on these 3845 routers. And they also have the CUCM, which is a Cisco uh, Unified Call Manager, which runs on virtual machines and, and an appliance like a Linux box really associate <laughs> they both have the same name but they're not they're not the same product they kind of do the same thing they're both pbx type applications but i believe the the cucm product that runs on linux was purchased by cisco and i believe this one right here they developed themselves anyway so we're going to be using the call manager express and we're going to put it on our los angeles test bed all right and so i'm basically just going to put all this that we're using in our SIP test bed is going to go right here. And this will, and we'll use, and then we'll set up the uh, Cisco Call Manager Express, or the CME, I'm just going to call it the CME from now on, to be our PBX. And it'll run in this Los Angeles gateway. And if you remember from a long time ago, <laughs> when I purchased these routers, the Los Angeles gateway and the Chicago gateway both have... Uh, CME installed on them. So we're good to go. And the reason why I'm having to do this is you probably already know, but I'll just state it anyway, is you can only do so much testing, <laughs> sip testing phone to phone. For what we're doing, we've exhausted everything we need. Now we need a a back-to-back -back user agent or a proxy. And the CME will be a back-to-back -back user agent for us, okay? So I went ahead and copied that config over from our SIP test bed. Didn't bother changing the IP address uh, station IDs from 44, 45, and 46. I did have to change the, um, the net mask though to dot 13. But for now, we'll just keep it VLAN one default. I'm going to try to use this uh, configuration uh, document. There, I can only find two that were actually um, any good. And, and this one looked pretty good. I, I like the layout of it. This is very familiar to me. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you, you know that this, this is very familiar. You see all the analog stuff's plugged into the router. That's very common. And then all the IP stuff is going through this catalyst. Uh, we're gonna be using a SMC switch because it's a power over ethernet switch. I thought about plugging it into our catalyst switch here, or 3750, but there's really no need, right? There's actually a, a little ethernet switch built into this router. If you've been watching, you know that the fast ethernet cards has like, gosh, I forget, 16 ports on it or something like that. So it's like a little mini switch in there. So you'll see some switch commands that will do. This little document right here, I'm just gonna go through it and we're gonna just, go step by step setting up our uh, call manager express at some point we'll have to veer away from it because it's it's using the skinny uh, call control protocol which is sccp and we're, we're going to be using grand stream sip phones we're not going to be using skinny phones uh, that's proprietary to um, cisco oh by the way <laughs> the other document i found is this behemoth <laughs> Look at this thing. Cisco Unified Communica Communications Manager Express Systems <laughs> Administrator Guide. Yeah, you can, at least it's been updated this year. Uh, but look at it, 1,600 pages long. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I think we'll just use this as a reference. Um, this, this document here, it's pretty long, but like I said, at some point we're gonna veer away from it. I, and plus it's, it goes into setting up this, um, this uh, Unity Express, which is like voicemail, right? And, but I, I'm pretty sure we can use 
the CMA to do some some voicemail. I well, we'll have to check. I I know on some of the routers they they support it, but if we don't have enough flash memory, then <laughs> we're not going to get very much voicemail. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering what this is here, yeah, even the even the experienced network engineers can can lay an egg every once in a while, right? This is version 11 document. So when I was first looking at this, here's a version 10. I noticed the subnet mask right here. I'm like, 16? That's not right. And it's actually dotted all over. It's 16 again, 16 again, 16 here. Of course, I copied and pasted it earlier and, and propagated that same error. Uh, and now it's six times throughout this document. Uh, this is version 10, I've already fixed it, but I wanted to show you uh, this right here. So I know what I did, right? And I already fixed it. It's, it's slash 25 is what it's supposed to be. But what I did is I said, okay, I want 128 IP addresses, right? Let's look at, okay, yeah, here we go. So I wanted 128 IP addresses, right? So instead of taking 256 and dividing by two, um, which is gives you 128, so the subnet mask could have been 255, 255, 255, 128. Um, I took 32 and divided it by two, which gave me 16. <laughs> and that's not right, because a uh, subnet, a bit mask of 16, about 65,000 uh, station IDs. All right, two, it's 255 times 255. And so I, I drew this out just to just kind of show you, I wrote this example out. So if you want 16 IP addresses, you do 256 minus 16, which gives you a subnet mask at 240. Or to use a bit mask, so you do a 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. So you'd want a bit mask of, of 28, right? And if you want a bit mask of one, 128 IP addresses, it's 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. So it'd be slash 25, which is what I put right here. All right. And then everything in between. You just, you just count up. So this is 1, 2, 4, 8, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. And of course, if you want 255, then all these are zero. Right, which gives you 255, 255, 255.0, and that's your whole 255 IP addresses. And if you only want one IP address, it's 255, 255, 255.255, 255 or it's slash 32, right? Okay, so I was kind of thumbing through this document a little bit, and it looks like they want to use uh, DHCP for the phones, which which is fine. I usually for testing, I usually give them static IPs, but I kind of wanted to stick to this document just so you had something to reference as you're watching this video, kind of going through this stuff. I've got this link plugged in right here, but it it hasn't been provisioned yet. So we need to provision this, and we need to change the IP address in this SMC switch which it's actually still on dot one, like that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and, and swing this, this link right here back to my management network, which is the dot one network. That way we can, we'll just log into each one of the phones. We'll set it for DHCP, and then we'll set, we'll give this ethernet switch, we'll change it to 13.41 instead of uh, 1.41, right? And its default gateway would be 13.1. So, I'll be right back. All right, so I'm logged into all three devices. We're going to, uh, let's see, I think it's under basic. Yep. I'm going to just do the phones first, and then I'll do the switch last. And hopefully, <laughs> when we get the dot .13 network go set up, we'll be able to log back into these guys. So I'm just gonna add, oh, that's all right, we're gonna do DHCP. Uh, okay, so just enable DHCP and click update and reboot. It's probably gonna get an address from my network. 
my management network, but that's okay. All right. Uh, DHCP. Scroll down. Update. Reboot. Okay. Basic. Oop. DHCP. Update. And reboot. Okay. And this guy right here, we're going to set him to dot 13.41. So let's see. Land settings. And just add a 3 to this guy. And as default gateway will be 3. 13. Uh, VLAN 1. That is correct. Management VLAN is 1. Okay, so apply. Yep. Okay. All right. There we go. So now we just got to get the router set up. Okay, so I'm logged into the Cisco Los Angeles router, Gateway 1. And uh, let's see here. Um, show config. Let me copy all this out. All right. <laughs> there's, there's not much in this router, is there? And we don't really care. We're gonna we'll, we're gonna do this in little chunks because I don't want these videos to be real long. I won't be able. I want people to be able to find them, you know, find what they're looking for, and without having to weed through an hour-long video, right? So I plugged it into this guy right here, and here's where I plugged it in. Here's that the 16 ports I was telling you. It's like a little Ethernet switch, right? There's a one right there, so one port, port zero. Okay, that makes sense. So config T, let's see, we want this guy right here. Copy, paste. Uh, description is, um, oh, so what is its name? It's, uh, so we call it the LA E-Switch one for that one, so we'll call this one LA e-switch 2 and I'll say so um, a link for SMC LA e-switch oops 2 all right okay so we don't want an IP address we're gonna do uh, it's, uh, I, I don't think we need this command. Let's see, switch, switch port access VLAN one. And then uh, load interval 30. That's just so it updates the, count, the stats faster. And um, I'll do a control C and a right. I'll just do a show config. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. See, it didn't. Um, that that command, that switch port mode, that switch port access command was uh, is is defaulted. So it, that's why I didn't add it in there, right? Now, if we would have changed this to a different VLAN, it would have added it in there. But speaking of VLANs, let's go down here and check. So we're gonna give our VLAN a one an IP address. So um, config t interface vlan oops vlan one oops and uh ip address 192.168.13.1.255.255.255.0 all right oops i forgot to turn on the term oops come on I missed all the console messages, but okay. Um, gosh, I can't think. <laughs> There's not a lot to this, right? So uh, let's just try it. So ping 192.168.1.41. Nope. And I figured out what we forgot. <laughs> it's a layer one problem. Those things will get you every time. I still have the uh, 
Ethernet switch cable plugged into the management LAN. Let me move it real quick. Ah, oh, much better. Ah, let's try that ping command again. Oh, still no. Darn. Oh. Yeah, what's that command for VLANs? Um, config T. Man, this, this will get you every single time. Uh-oh. Line protocol on every VLAN changed state to up. Oh, maybe. <laughs> Actually, I, I think the router beat me to it. But uh, let's just do it anyway. VLAN 1. Now, you notice I didn't put interface VLAN 1. I just put VLAN 1. And then it's um, that shutdown state. So I'm just going to do a no shut on it. Oh. I, oh, that's right. VLAN 1 is default, right? So it should always be up. So never mind. Um, so, uh, huh. Oh, look what I'm trying to ping. 1.41. Yep. Yeah. Now you see how I got that slash 16 in there, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's what happens when when you're trying to uh, engage your mouth and your brain at the same time. It just doesn't work. Hey, very good. Okay, so take a quick look at this document real quick. Yeah, so the next step is uh, is defining the DHCP server for the phones. And uh, now we can ping from the router to our uh, SMC switch. And so these phones are, my, uh, the Grandstream phones are just sitting there waiting for a DHCP server. So to keep this video short, I, I want to keep er everything in little segments because uh, this is going to be a kind of a complicated configuration. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop here. And then in the next video, we'll start with configuring the DHCP server. Okay, so don't forget, you can support the network engineering video blog by donation using a credit card and PayPal or by purchasing products at the Muxall store. Details and links are in the description under this video. Well, <laughs> that's about it for this video. If you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. That helps and hit the subscribe button. That really helps. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments under this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.